Captain Anderson, the man who commanded the aircraft carrier Kestrel and kept her afloat through countless battles. Nah, I'm just a guy who's fought one losing battle after another. However, since this war began, this ship hadn't taken a single hit from enemy forces. This ship may be unharmed, but it pains me to see fewer and fewer pilots coming back every time we launch them out on combat sorties. Now the only pilot left is Captain Snow, the squad leader. Nobody wants an aircraft carrier without aircraft. So we're just sitting idle here. At the end of the last war, I was assigned the mission of dropping a nuclear weapon on a city in my own country. Hmm. When I refused and went AWOL, it was Captain Bartlett who took me in. His nickname was also Kid back then. He was a strange man. Fifteen years since the war and he never got promoted once. In my country there was a group called the Grey Men. I'm likely to still be around today. To them, I'm a traitor. And for the past 15 years, Bartlett's protected me from them. Speaking of which, you don't think the Grey Men are involved with the disappearance of President Harling, do you? I've got an intelligence-gathering vessel in my fleet, the Andromeda that's capable of intercepting all forms of communications. Recently, it picked up a secret message transmitted in Belkin. That, Colonel, is why I called all of you here. All this intense flying's tough on an old body. From here on out, it's their time to shine. Hmm. But what do we do about planes? We've captured a ship trying to smuggle aircraft from a South Belkin company into Yuktabania. Plenty of planes to choose from. All right. If there aren't any objections, then I'll take command of this air operation. We're launching a rescue operation for the President of Osia within the Principality of Belka. The communications intelligence ship Andromeda received information that President Harling is being held in Belka. The location is an old castle positioned on the southern edge of the border zone between Belka and North Osia. Sea Goblin, our helicopter squadron, will handle the direct rescue effort. After securing the area, a helicopter will descend on the castle and drop our infiltrating rescue squad. It will station keep in the air while the rescue is taking place on the ground and in the castle. Your mission is to provide air support for the Sea Goblin's rescue operation and destroy any opposing enemy forces. Choose an aircraft for the mission from the Kestrel's carrier jets and prepare to launch. Captain, please choose my plane. Captain, please choose a plane for me to pilot. Captain, which plane should I use? We're launching with this formation then? War Dog, launch!
altitude restrictions canceled. Return to your mission. Good luck.
concept. These guys aren't like the Ukes. They fly and fight differently. Well, well. So this is the legendary Falcon Fighter Squadron. Oh no, they're targeting the helicopter! It's coming this way! Come on, help us! Hey, over here! We're your targets, not that helicopter! If we don't defeat the enemy, our forces inside the castle will be in danger.
Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your efforts. By the way, your voice sounds familiar. Are you... I thought so. Looks like I owe you another one. Mission accomplished. President Harling was safely retrieved. The President is showing some signs of fatigue, but in general his condition is good.
When we got word of the president's return and ran up to the bridge, he was smiling and chatting with Pops and Captain Anderson. Apparently, he spent his days confined in the old castle, looking at the seven ground zero craters right out his window, which served as the border between the two countries of North and South Belka. In the end, the Ocean army couldn't take the Yuktavanian capital, and the war began to bog down. For Belka, who challenged the world to battle, but were crushed by the twin powers of Osea and Yuktibania, there can be no sweeter revenge. They had created the hatred between the two countries, hoping that the war would eventually exhaust them both. The military officials on both sides were playing right into their hands. The intelligence vessel continued to intercept the Yuktibanian army's communications. One message from Air Force Traffic Control contained a string of mysterious numbers. Latitude, longitude, a date and time, and one more set of numbers. The president had the answer. Well, how about that? These are the numbers of votes I won in my presidential elections. Huh, this is from the first time I won, and here's the number from the election two years ago. This message was meant for me. The coordinates marked a location within North Belkin territory. The date was tomorrow. The squadron from Sand Island became the president's personal air fleet, even as the official reports continued to state that they were shot down and killed. This was the new emblem.